San Miguel Corporation PSE, SMC, is a Filipino multinational publicly listed conglomerate holding company. It is the Philippines' largest corporation in terms of revenue, with over 17,000 employees in over 100 major facilities throughout the Asia-Pacific region. Its flagship product, San Miguel Beer, is one of the largest selling beers. San Miguel's manufacturing operations extend beyond its home market to Hong Kong, China, Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia and Australia, and its products are exported to 60 markets around the world. Since 2008, SMC has ventured beyond its core businesses, becoming involved in fuel and oil, Patron Corporation, power generation and infrastructure. It was briefly involved in Philippine Airlines from April 2012 to September 2014. History In 1889, a well-known Manila businessman, Enrique Maria Barreto de Icaza y Esteban, applied for a royal grant from Spain to establish a brewery in the Philippines. He was awarded the grant for a period of 20 years. On September 29, 1890, Michaelmas, or the feast day of St. Michael the Archangel, La Fabrica de Cerveza San Miguel was declared open for business. Located at 6 Calzada de Malacañang, later called Calle Aviles, the brewery took its name from Arable, suburb or district, San Miguel, Manila. The facility had two sections, one devoted to the production of ice with a daily capacity of 5 tons, and the other to beer production. The brewery was the first in Southeast Asia using the most modern equipment and facilities of the day. With 70 employees, the plant produced 3,600 hectoliters about 47,000 cases of lager beer during the first year and subsequently produced other types of beer, notably Cerveza Negra, Eagle Extra Stout and Doble Bach. Early success led to the expansion of the business and Barreto decided to incorporate his brewery. On 6 June 1893, the company was incorporated and registered with a capital of P180,000. Those forming the corporation were Barreto, Pedro Pablo Roxas y Castro, Gonzalo Tuasin y Patino, Vicente D. Fernandez y Castro, Albino Goyanechia, Benito Lagarda y Tuasin and the heirs of Don Mariano Buenaventura y Chuadan. Pedro Pablo Roxas was soon appointed manager, playing a prominent role in the development of the firm. He was the active member of the firm until 1896, when he left for Europe. Prior to his departure, he acquired Barreto's shares in the company worth P42,000. After Barreto retired in May 1896, Roxas acquired the rest of Barreto's stake in the business. In 1895, San Miguel Beer won the first of its many awards as a product of the highest quality at the Exposición Regional de Filipinas. By 1896, San Miguel Beer was outselling by more than 5 to 1 all imported beers in the country. The 1900s ushered in a period of prosperity after the Philippine Revolution and the beginning of the American occupation. Demand for beer increased, and for San Miguel, still under Roxas' leadership, modernization of their operations included installation of electric conveyors and automatic machines, with the brewery's equipment modernized by 1910. San Miguel Brewery, Inc. 1913-1963, by 1913, imported beer represented only 12% of the total consumption in the Philippines, San Miguel held an 88% share of the industry. Roxas died in Paris, France in 1913. Soon after, Benito Lagarda and Gonzalo Tuasin made it advisable to change the form of the company from a firm of co-participants to a corporation, San Miguel Brewery, Inc. Roxas's son, Antonio Roxas y de Ayala, was appointed president, with Enrique Brias y de Coya and Don Ramon J. Fernandez as managers. By 1914, San Miguel began to export, with its products finding ready markets in Hong Kong, Shanghai and Guam. When the First World War broke out, exports came to a temporary halt due to difficulties such as shortage of raw materials and the consequent rise in manufacturing costs. It was not until prohibition was repealed in the United States that San Miguel was able to resume exports to Guam and later to Honolulu, territory of Hawaii. By the end of 1914, Enrique Brias, after seeing that his efforts and industry had resulted in a progressive and prosperous business, retired from active business life in favor of his son, Antonio Brias y Roxas. In 1918, Antonio Roxas resigned from his position as president. Andres Soriano Sr., 1918-1964.
Andres Soriano, a grandson of Don Pedro Pablo Roxas and a nephew of Don Antonio Roxas, joined San Miguel as a clerk in the accounting department. In 1918, after the resignation of Antonio Roxas, Ramon J. Fernandez assumed the presidency and Soriano was made acting manager. In 1923, Soriano was appointed manager and managed San Miguel together with Antonio Brias y Roxas with constantly increasing success. Diversification into new lines of business began in the 1920s. The company opened in 1922 the Royal Soft Drinks Plant in Manila producing Royal True Orange, other royal products and aerated water. In 1919, the company acquired the Oriental Brewery and Ice Company and transformed the building into an ice plant and cold storage, later the Royal Soft Drinks Plant. Five years later, the company secured the rights to bottle and distribute Coca-Cola in the Philippines. In 1925, San Miguel went into the ice cream business with the purchase of the Magnolia plant on Calle Avales which was transferred a year later to a new site on Calle Iche, now, C. Palanca Sr. Street, in Quiapo District, Manila. The new site used to house the Fabrica de Hielo de Manila which was bought by San Miguel in 1924. To achieve greater self-sufficiency in its operations, the firm opened a new plant in 1930 to produce carbon dioxide for its soft drinks products and dry ice for the refrigeration needs of its ice cream products. In 1932, a plant was set up to produce compressed yeast for bakeries and medical use. The following year, the company leased from the government the site for insular ice and cold storage for a period of 10 years. During the 1930s, San Miguel began investing in businesses overseas. The company set up a short-lived dairy business in Calcutta, India and Singapore cold storage creameries, Singapore, and invested in breweries in the United States, a stake in the George Muehlbach Brewing Company and majority holdings in the Lone Star Brewing Company located in San Antonio, Texas. In 1939, the management of the company was reorganized along the lines of American corporations. San Miguel's management team was made up of the board of directors, president, vice president, treasurer and nine directors and the executive officers of the corporation. Ramon J. Fernandez was elected president of the board of directors and Antonio Roxas Y. Gargallo, a son of Antonio Roxas, was elected vice president. Soriano was elected president of the corporation, with Antonio Brias Y. Roxas as vice president. Eduardo Roxas y Gargallo, another son of Don Antonio Roxas, and Jacobo Zobel y Roxas were appointed directors. Expanding and modernizing the company, however, meant diluting family control. San Miguel became the first Filipino company to be owned by thousands of shareholders. To retain control, Soriano relied on alliances with his Roxas relatives and associates. Before World War II broke out, San Miguel built a glass factory in Paco and the Cebu Royal Plant, its first installation outside Luzon. When the war reached the Philippines, Soriano was commissioned as a colonel and served as an aide to General Douglas MacArthur. One of the first Filipino brewmasters was Dominator San Diego Santos, a chemist from Obando, Bulacan. After the war, San Miguel rebuilt and mounted a large-scale expansion program. The company acquired and modernized a second brewery in Polo, Bulacan, now part of Valenzuela City, in 1947. Two years later, five other plants were opened, the Manila Glass Plant in Farola, a carbon dioxide plant in Otis, a carton plant, the Iloilo Coca-Cola plant and the Farola Power Plant. Exports of San Miguel Pale Pilsen resumed. New soft drink plants followed in Davao and Naga. In 1953, Soriano signed the Manila Agreement, which allowed the Spanish company La Cigara S.A. to brew and sell San Miguel beer in Spain. This company, renamed San Miguel, Fabricas de Cerveza y Malta, now Mahu San Miguel Group, in 1957, was a separate, independent company that had exclusive rights to use the San Miguel brand in Europe. San Miguel Corporation, 1964 present Andres Soriano Jr., 1964-1984 In 1964, the company's name was changed to San Miguel Corporation SMC, and moved to a new head office along Ayala Avenue in Makati. Andres Soriano died on December 30, 1964.
At the time of his death, Soriano had parlayed his family's vast San Miguel fortune into mining, dairies, factories, a newspaper and a radio station. He had investments in Philippine Airlines, held the largest Coca-Cola franchise, and owned five insurance agency distributorships, a Kansas City brewery that made Lone Star and Colt 45, gold mines in British East Africa and a development company in Spain. Antonio Roxas Y. Gargallo was elected chairman and Andres Soriano Jr. became president. Soriano was credited with instituting modern management, including decentralization along product lines. The Mandao, Cebu complex was inaugurated in 1967 its brewery and glass plant commenced operations a year later. Soriano continued to diversify the food business, building an ice cream plant in 1970 and expanding into poultry production in 1973, it later added shrimp processing and freezing in 1984. By 1973, SMC sales exceeded a billion pesos for the first time and profits topped the 100 million peso mark. A new corporate logo was adopted in 1975. The San Miguel Escudo, seal, symbol of the Royal Grant, was retained as the logo San Miguel Beer, its original grantee. In the 1970s, then-Philippine President, Ferdinand Marcos imposed a tax on the production of coconuts, a major Philippine cash crop, with the proceeds supposed to fund that industry development. It was alleged, however, that the money was funneled into United Coconut Planters Bank, controlled by Eduardo Coanco Jr., which Coanco then used much of the funds to help him purchase his controlling stake in San Miguel in 1983. The controlling interest carried nine of SMC's 15 directors' seats with it. SMC encountered its first major competitor in the Philippine beer market in 1982 with the entry of Asia Brewery, Inc. The rivalry between Asia Brewery and SMC came to a head in 1988, when Asia Brewery cannily introduced a bargain-priced brand called simply Beer, also known as Beer Pale Pilsen and Beer Na Beer. The product looked and tasted like San Miguel beer, playing upon the fact that in the Philippines, the San Miguel brand was synonymous with beer. It was a creative counter to SMC's notoriously aggressive and sometimes cutthroat competitive strategy, which had reportedly included attempts to sabotage Asia Brewery's sales network and smash its empty bottles. Asia Brewery even hired away San Miguel's brewmaster. At that time, the original San Miguel Brewery buildings in San Miguel, Manila were demolished upon transfer of ownership to the Philippine government as part of the Malacañang Palace grounds. The site became a park while some became part of the government complex as the new executive building. In 1983, SMC sold its remaining minority interest in the Spanish company, San Miguel, Fábricas de Cerveza y Malta, S.A. The Philippine and Spanish companies have been operated independently of one another. The Spanish company enjoyed success with San Miguel in its home market. Also, it was the number one Spanish beer exported throughout Europe. Consequently, well-traveled consumers easily confuse the two San Miguel beers, even though they are brewed by two different companies. Eduardo Coanco Jr., 1983-1986 Soriano's administration also witnessed the battle for corporate control. A thorny issue of management transparency broke Soriano. S. long-standing alliance with his Zobel de Ayala relatives. The historical corporate battle that resulted in the loss of effective control by the Sorianos and Zobels. In 1983, Enrique J. Zobel, a third cousin of Soriano, president of Ayala Corporation and was vice chairman of the SMC board, instigated a takeover of SMC. The seeds of the family feud lay in the refusal of the Soriano management to share corporate information with Zobel, particularly regarding contracts that SMC management was entering into with ANSCOR, a Soriano company. Soriano viewed his third cousin Zobel as a competitor, while Zobel, holding nearly 20% of SMC stake, viewed Soriano, with about 7%, as mismanaging the company and engaging in sweetheart deals. Unable to oust Soriano, Zobel sold his group. 
S19.5% stake to businessman Eduardo Cuanco Jr., an associate of then President Ferdinand Marcos. Cuanco S Coconut Industry Investment Fund aka United Coconut Planters Bank accumulated an additional 31% of SMC giving him effective control of SMC and leaving the Soriano family with a mere 3% Funds used by Coanco to acquire Zobel's stake came from levies imposed by the Marcos dictatorship on coconut farmers The Supreme Court has declared such levies to be public funds and therefore any assets bought using these funds are owned by coconut farmers after Soriano died of cancer in March 19, 1984, Kowanko became the chairman of SMC in 1984. That same year, SMC moved to its new head office in Mandaluyong. Kowanko brought coconut oil milling and refining operations into SMC's portfolio. His reign, however, was cut short when Marcos was toppled in 1986. Andres Soriano III, 1986-1998 after the People Power Revolution in 1986, Corazon Aquino, Coanco's estranged cousin, became president of the Philippines. Aquino rode on the crest of widespread public outrage over the assassination of her husband, Benigno Aquino Jr., in 1983. One of the people blamed for her husband's death was Coanco, who fled on the same aircraft as Marcos to Hawaii in 1986. The Aquino administration sequestered Coanco's stake in SMC and agreed to let Andres Soriano III, son of the late Soriano, run the company in spite of the Soriano family's holdings in San Miguel being a mere 1%. Soriano launched a campaign to reclaim the family legacy, but when he tried to buy back the abandoned shares, he was blocked by the Aquino administration's Presidential Commission on Good Government PCGG. The PCGG assumed control, but not legal ownership, of the 51.4% stake and refused to relinquish it. The government asserted that the stake had been illegally obtained. The PCGG continued to tend its SMC stake into the early 1990s, but it acceded de facto control of the conglomerate to Soriano via a management contract with ANSCOR. Soriano continued the company. S program of expansion, acquiring majority control of La Tondeña, Inc. Now, Ginebra San Miguel, Inc., the leading producer of hard liquor in the Philippines, in 1987 and adding beef and pork production Monterey Meats, to the company's food operations in 1988. Soriano embarked on an ambitious internationalization program, hoping to expand into other countries and mitigate the effects of the Philippines unstable economy. He also wanted to head off encroaching competition from the world's biggest breweries, namely Anheuser-Busch and Miller of the United States, Kirin of Japan, and BSN of France. Soriano allocated $1 billion to a five-year strategic internationalization program that focused on shaping up domestic operations, then progressing to licensing and exporting, overseas production, and finally to distribution of non-beer products. A subsequent decentralization created a holding company structure, with 18 non-beer operations positioned as subsidiaries. This corporate reorganization freed the spun-off businesses from the bureaucratic shackles of a large conglomerate. In the course of this multifaceted effort to attain optimum efficiency, SMC reduced its workforce by more than 16%, from a 1989 high of 39,138 to 32,832 by 1993. With its domestic ducks in a row, SMC turned to the next stage in its internationalization, beer licensing and exporting initiative. Although the company had exported beer for most of its history, this effort was intensified dramatically in the late 1980s. SMC S beer exports grew by 150% from 1985 to 1989 alone, and the brand was soon exported to 24 countries, including all of Asia. S key markets as well as the United States, Australia, and the Middle East. 
Once the core brand was established in a particular market, SMC would begin to create production facilities, sometimes on an independent basis and sometimes in concert with an indigenous joint venture partner. By 1995, SMC had manufacturing plants in Hong Kong, China, Indonesia, Vietnam, and had licensing partners in Taiwan, Guam and Nepal. Thus, in spite of the overarching quarrel over SMC's ownership, not to mention other problems endemic to operating in the Philippines, the company S sales quintupled from P12.23 billion in 1986 to P68.43 billion by 1994. Net income increased twice as fast, from P1.11 billion to P11.86 billion over the same period, although its overseas operations, as a whole, were not yet profitable. In 1996 SMC purchased full control of its Hong Kong arm, San Miguel Brewery Hong Kong Limited. In April of the following year, SMC's domestic soft drink bottling unit, Coca-Cola Bottlers Philippines, Inc., was merged into the Australia-based Coca-Cola Amatil Limited CCA. In effect, SMC exchanged its 70% interest in a Philippine-only operation for a 25% stake in CCA, which had operations in 17 countries. CCA soon demerged the latter operations into a UK-based firm called Coca-Cola Beverages, PLC, resulting in a reduction of SMC's stake in CCA to 22%. From 1995 through 1997, SMC suffered a downturn in its main domestic businesses, while overseas operations were still in the red. Profits plummeted. In response, a major restructuring of the company's loss-making food businesses was undertaken. SMC's Magnolia Ice Cream and Milk business was merged with the Nestle Philippines Group, to form Magnolia Nestle Corporation. By late 1998, SMC's stake in this business was acquired by Nestle. SMC also exited from the ready-to-eat meal sector and curtailed the operations of its shrimp farming business. By late 1997, the company was also beginning to feel the effects of the Asian economic crisis. The Kowanko Ang Era, 1998-present Andres Soriano III resigned in July 1998 and Eduardo M. Kowanko Jr. was elected chairman of San Miguel Corporation. Francisco C. Eismendi Jr. stayed as president and Ramon S. Ang was elected vice chairman in January 1999. Ang was appointed president and chief operating officer following the retirement of Eismendi in 2002. Confronted by greater competitive pressures as a result of the 1997 financial crisis, the pace of change quickened for San Miguel upon Cuanco's return. Amid an extremely difficult operating environment, working toward configuring the corporation to have better response to the highly competitive climate of the time. The immediate goals upon assuming leadership was to ease the burden of the spiraling interest expense, pursue new strategic alliances to strengthen the business, particularly in the international arena, and strengthen its profitability and financial standing to position the company for new opportunities. Progress was made on reducing costs, improving productivity and generating cash flow. Having installed a critical mass of brewing capacity in China, Indonesia and Vietnam, the new management decided to continue the company's investments in these areas, aggressively focusing on brand and volume building initiatives, most especially in China. SMC revamped the selling and distribution organization resulting in higher distribution efficiency, improved coverage of key accounts, greater pricing stability and reduced overall costs. In China, the company chose to focus on growth markets while still reaching close to 30 cities. Where in the past, it had primarily concentrated on the premium market it then aggressively pushed its medium and low-end brands. By the end of 1998, shuffling assets to find the ideal portfolio and looking to restructure our operations and focus on our core competencies, Kowanko sold SMC's stake in Coca-Cola Beverages, PLC, Coca-Cola Amatil's bottler in Europe, along with SMC's 45% stake in Nestle Philippines. 
The sale of its stake in both companies was part of the new management's effort to restructure the San Miguel Group and focus its technological, managerial and financial strengths to ventures where it believed it could add the most value. A number of management changes were made in conjunction with a right-sizing program. Management layers were flattened to restore the company to fighting trim. In May, the San Miguel Brewing International SMBIL, regional headquarters was transferred from Hong Kong to Manila and to reduce overhead expenses, the employees of SMBIL were repatriated. The organizational streamlining was meant to configure San Miguel to enable it to better respond to the competitive climate. The goal was to speed up decision-making and have a flatter and more dynamic organization, one that was more efficient and more responsive to the market. The group-wide logistics and purchasing functions were realigned at the corporate level. The food, liquor and international operations were recapitalized. Metro Bottled Water Corporation, manufacturers of Wilkins Distilled Water, was acquired. In February 2001, SMC reacquired control of Coca-Cola Bottlers Philippines, Inc. Shortly after, SMC acquired Pure Foods Corporation, becoming the undisputed market leader in the Philippines' fast-growing food industry, owning two-thirds of the refrigerated and processed meat market, and over a third of the poultry and feeds industries. Kowanko and Ang have also been on an international shopping spree. For the next three years, SMC bought six companies in four neighboring countries. Its first major acquisition was Australian boutique brewer Jay Boag & Son for $96 million in 2000. To shore up its war chest, SMC took in Japanese brewer Kirin Brewery Co., Ltd., which acquired a 15% stake in SMC, for $540 million in 2002. SMC continued its international acquisitions, paying $97 million for Thai Amrit Brewery Limited and $35.5 million for food processor TTC Vietnam Co. in 2003. In 2004, it bought 51% of Berry Limited, Australia's top juice maker, for $97.9 million. By 2004, international sales comprised 13% of total revenues from 10% the previous year. In 2005, the company made its biggest overseas acquisition with the takeover of National Foods Limited, Australia's largest publicly traded dairy, which it bought for P80.38 billion. That was followed later in the year with its $420 million purchase of Singapore-based Del Monte Pacific Limited, the region's largest pineapple canner. San Miguel merged National Foods' operation with Barry. In 2006, SMC has sold its 65% stake at Coca-Cola Bottlers Philippines, Inc., including its subsidiaries Cosmos Bottling and Philippine Beverage Partners, to the Coca-Cola Company TCCC, for $590 million. In November 2007, SMC sold Boags to Lion Nathan for $325 million. The same month, SMC also sold National Foods to Kirin for 294 billion yen, while the global financial meltdown of 2008-2009 sent many companies into full retreat. San Miguel Corporation powered ahead, investing mightily in a strategy to reaccelerate growth and improve margins. In 2010, SMC acquired majority control of Patron Corporation. In April 2012, SMC bought a 49% minority stake in Philippine Airlines, PAL Holdings, worth $500 million, to revitalize PAL and Air Philippines. On September 15, 2014, SMC sold its stake in PAL Holdings for approximately $1.3 billion and relinquished management control back to the group of Lucio Tan. SMC has also expanded its oil and energy business with the purchase of ESO Malaysia Burhad, 65%, ExxonMobil Borneo SDNBHD, 100%, and ExxonMobil Malaysia SDNBHD, 100%, for $577.3 million, in October. October 2012, SMC bought out the 24% of its shares from the government through Coconut Industry Investment Fund CIIF, companies by paying CIIF, P57.6 billion. By 2017, Inigo Zobel, son of Enrique Zobel, became the largest common stock shareholder of SMC owning 66.1% through his holding company, Top Frontier Investment Holdings, Inc. In separate statements on May 30, 2016, Globe Telecom and PLDT 
Pt will each acquire half of Vega Telecom from SMC for P69.1 billion. The acquisition entails P52.08 billion for 100% equity interest in Vega Telecom and the assumption of around P17.02 billion of liabilities. On November 6, 2017, SMC announced the consolidation of its beverage businesses into San Miguel Pure Foods Company, Inc. through a $6.6 .6 billion share swap deal. San Miguel Pure Foods Company will acquire 7.86 billion shares in San Miguel Brewery Inc. and 216.97 million shares in Ginebra San Miguel Inc. from SMC. After the consolidation, San Miguel Pure Foods Company will be renamed San Miguel Food and Beverage, Inc. Legal issues San Miguel shares are also involved in the controversial Coco Levy case, Sandiganbayan Civil Case No. 33, which is actually subdivided into a total of eight cases involving different parties and properties. Arguably the most important case is Case No. 33F, which involves 51% of the shares of San Miguel. This majority stake at San Miguel has been further subdivided into three separate litigations, each of which reaching the Supreme Court in highly contentious proceedings. The first case involved 4% of San Miguel shares, which, in the case of San Miguel Corporation v. Sandiganbayan, was awarded by the Supreme Court to the government. The second case, Republic of the Philippines v. Sandiganbayan and Eduardo Coanco Jr., involved a 20% block that the Supreme Court, voting 7-4, awarded to Eduardo Danding. Coanco. The most recent High Court pronouncement came early this year, Philippine Coconut Producers Federation, Inc. C -O -C -O -F -E -D, versus Republic of the Philippines, where the court, voting 11-0, declared that the remaining 27% of San Miguel is owned by the government. Note the 27% had been diluted to 24% due to the government's failure to subscribe to the increased authorized capital stock of San Miguel. Core Businesses Investments 2008 present Sports teams Basketball Manila Industrial and Commercial Athletic Association San Miguel Braves 1938 to 1981 SMC has long been involved in commercial basketball in the Philippines beginning with the Manila Industrial and Commercial Athletic Association MICAA founded in 1938 where SMC organized its first basketball team playing under the name San Miguel Brewery after the company changed its name to San Miguel Corporation the team's name was changed to San Miguel Corporation Braves or the San Miguel Braves SMC remained with the MICAA until the league's dissolution in 1982. Philippine Basketball Association San Miguel Beermen, 1975 present. Barangay Ginebra San Miguel, 1979 present. Magnolia Hotshots 1988 present in 1975 SMC organized its second basketball team when the company became a founding member of the Philippine Basketball Association the first professional basketball league in Asia The team is currently playing as the San Miguel Beermen and is currently the PBA franchise with the most number of championships 23 SMC also owns two more PBA teams, Barangay Ginebra San Miguel and the Magnolia Hotshots, as a result of corporate acquisitions. Philippine Basketball League Magnolia Pure Water Wizards 1983-2010 After the dissolution of the MICAA in 1983, the Philippine Amateur Basketball League PABL, later renamed Philippine Basketball League PBL, was formed in 1983 to take its place as the major amateur basketball league in the Philippines. SMC was one of the league's founding members and remained until the league became dormant in 2010. Its PABL PBL franchise won a total of nine championships. ASEAN Basketball League San Miguel Beermen ABL 2011 to 2013 SMC also participated in the ASEAN Basketball League, playing as the San Miguel Beermen ABL from 2011 to 2013, winning one ABL championship. 
San Miguel Alab Pilipinas 2018, as name sponsor on February 1, 2018, SMC became the name sponsor of Alab Pilipinas. Volleyball Patron Blaze Spikers Football Davao Aguila FC 2017 present, sponsor only. See also Grupo Mahu San Miguel References External links Official website San Miguel Corporation on Facebook